You're listening to Sustainable Colgate, an ongoing dialogue connecting the Colgate community, upstate New York residents, and the local ecosystem through current environmental issues. By connecting with fellow students, professors, and members of Madison County, we hope to raise awareness and promote a more sustainable community. We're your hosts, Anne-Marie Heinrich and Laura Wood. In January 2009, Colgate signed the American College and University President's Climate Commitment to take action towards becoming carbon neutral. Over 660 colleges and universities have officially acknowledged their responsibility to help reduce anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions by 80% by 2050. Colgate has already made significant progress in improving sustainability on campus. The university enlarged several sustainable programs on campus through actions such as the development of a large-scale composting site, the establishment of a community garden, and the implementation of sustainability-focused academic programming. As a result of these efforts, Second Nature recognized Colgate as a 2011 Climate Leadership Award recipient during its annual summit in Washington, D.C. In signing the climate commitment, Colgate pledged to complete an emissions inventory and take immediate short-term action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. By 2010, the university reduced emissions by 17%. Colgate has ambitiously set the university's bicentennial celebration in 2019 as a target date for achieving carbon neutrality. To achieve this goal, the university created the Climate Action Plan that outlined 27 projects to be implemented by 2015. Here to discuss the Climate Action Plan is John Pamelia, Colgate Sustainability Coordinator. He joined Colgate in 2009 and has been the driving force behind the university's commitment to carbon neutrality. Why is it important that Colgate and other higher education institutes take major steps like these? Any college and university, in my opinion, that does not take climate change seriously is really not meeting their number one objective, and that's to prepare students for life and work in the 21st century. How could you ignore the most profound or one of the most profound issues of our time and think that you're meeting your mission? There's another reason why as well. Higher education, in the United States, we have 4,000 plus colleges and universities with incredible purchasing power. And not just purchasing power, but we invest in endowments as well. So when you look at where money is spent, in higher ed, if, if we take climate change seriously, then just as, a, as an organization of higher ed institutions, we can accelerate a change to a more sustainable country. That's one part of it, the direct purchasing, purchase of energy, purchase of stuff, chairs, tables, books. If that we did all of that through the eye of sustainability, it would cause a transformation. The other part is we have 100% of the educational footprint in the country. So tomorrow's leaders are all coming up through higher education, no matter what field they go into. What changes has Colgate already implemented? In 2010, for example, we reduced our carbon footprint by 17%. So we went from a, a footprint of a little over 17,000 tons to a little over 14,000 tons in one year. So how did that happen? Well, we became uh, much more efficient with our electricity use. That was done through computer power management systems, um, more efficient lighting. We've, we've done some lighting upgrades. I think just a general consciousness all the way around about flipping lights off. You know, we have those little prompts all over the place now. I think cumulatively that starts to have a big impact. So electricity is one. Um, we reduced our, our landfill waste by 35 tons in 2010 through increased recycling rates. So we really paid a lot of attention to recycling. Um, we reduced our fuel oil consumption by nearly 100,000 gallons in that year, which significantly reduced our carbon footprint. That was done through more efficient heating and cooling, uh, better use of our ma energy management system, and then also uh, increased use of our wood chip facility, which is a carbon neutral way to provide heating to campus. So those are just a few of the ways that we were able to reduce um, our carbon footprint. The ACU PCC defined carbon neutrality as having no net greenhouse gas emissions to be achieved by minimizing GHG emissions as much as possible and using carbon offsets or other measures to mitigate the remaining emissions. 
How heavily will Colgate be relying on the carbon offsets from the Patagonia Reforestation Initiative to minimize Colgate's greenhouse gas emissions? Okay, great. Um, yeah, carbon offsets are a part of it. Nobody who signs on to this um, does so with the expectation that at some point um, there's, you know, there's not going to be utilization of carbon offsets. So the question then becomes one of timing. Um, do we do it now or do we do it at some point in the far future? We decided to go earlier for a part of it. So we're going to be mitigating about 5,000 tons worth of emissions every year through planting of trees in Patagonia, Chile. So right now, those trees are being planted and every year they will sequester about, um, we'll get about 5,000 tons reduction, which is equivalent to about one third of our footprint or roughly the equivalent of our air travel emissions. Behavior change is listed as one of the 27 on-campus mitigation projects. How do we go about instilling passion in students and promoting individual change for the long term? For me, it's, it's really remarkable that students are not already passionate about this. I find it hard to believe that there is any student in a college or university today that does not take um, climate change or sustainability seriously. It's the defining thing, and again, in my opinion, of our time. And it affects everything. This isn't for environmental studies students. Um, if you care about energy in any way, then you should care about climate change. If you care about more economic future, or if you care about social structures or cultural diversity, or if you care about national security or geopolitics or international relations, then you should be paying attention to this issue. And it's impossible, really, to pay attention to this issue just looking at what other people can do. At the end of the day, we all need to do our part in some form. So if behavior change while you're living here on campus is a part of that, then everyone should just take small steps to ensure that the place where you're at is doing a little bit better. So we all have a stake in this, and we all can do something about it. And you know, part of it is getting the word out and making programs that people can get involved with. And that's what the Green Office program is all about, and that's what the Green Living program is all about. So hopefully we'll see over time more and more active participation in those programs. How has student involvement helped to develop the Climate Action Plan? Students were integral to the plan. You know, it took us over 18 months really to develop it, but I've been using student research since the day I got here um, to inform the Climate Action Plan. So we've had students in FSEM courses and in, in our core curriculum had environmental studies students all contribute research in some way. I've had my interns that have done research that has gone into the climate action plan and and then just student groups you know through the Green Summit. How do you think Colgate's carbon neutrality will affect Hamilton and the surrounding communities? Yeah good question. Um, anything that we do does not involve just Colgate um, because Let's imagine that our sustainability program is more advanced here. Basically, what's inherent to an advanced sustainability program is a wiser use and more efficient use of resources, water, electricity, energy of all kinds, local foods, you name it. All of those resources are shared resources. And when we're sharing those resources, we're sharing them with our neighbors. So if we become better at it, then that's a bigger slice of the pie for other people who also need those resources and we develop programs that um, will make it easier I think for people in the community to have access to some of that stuff. The other part of it is once our program gets a little more developed we then and we we know it better we can then take that knowledge that institutional knowledge and better share it with the surrounding community. Our Upstate Institute has excelled in this uh, for a long time so this just becomes another way to really take what we learn here and share, again, that knowledge with uh, our central New York neighbors. Apart from the reduced environmental impacts, what benefits or costs will come with this plan? Um, you know, I think you're talking about intangible 
some of the intangible values that come out of this, you know, besides the stuff that you can just measure. It's already paying off in the fact that, you know, when we were putting the plan together, we had seven subcommittees representing over 30 faculty and staff. And that just brought together people who really weren't talking about sustainability before or weren't talking to each other. So it built community. And I think that's one of the big benefits that comes out of this. You have a community where it transcends disciplines or departments, all working on a common goal. And there are very few things in the university that accomplish that. And this is a long-term goal. So again, we have students, we have faculty, we have staff at every level working on portions of our sustainability program. And that is helping to unite the community even better, make us a little bit stronger than we already are. If you look at the climate action plan in the economic analysis or the financial analysis that we put together, um, it really has a nice payback. And once it's implemented, we'll, you know, we'll realize reduced operating costs um, by nearly a million dollars a year if it goes the way we think it's going to go. And that is savings that builds resiliency in the university. It's dollars that we can apply to better meet our academic mission rather than just spending on resources that by and large we've just been wasting to this point. So sustainability definitely has a component to it that will save the university f financially and we can reapply those dollars. What do you think is going to be the greatest challenge moving forward with the Climate Action Plan? It's pretty ambitious. You know, 20 our climate action, our climate neutrality date is 2019. That is by far the upper echelon, what the 700 colleges and universities that have already committed where their target is. So I think we have, again, it's an ambitious plan with a lot of projects. And I think the biggest challenges will be change, um, because at the end of the day, it results in real change for some people. We're going to be doing things a little bit differently. And change comes hard for people, especially if they're comfortable with the way that they've been doing things for a while. So we tried to do things in pilot, you know, pilot projects and phase-ins so it doesn't, you know, come too abruptly for any single person. And then the other part of it is just who's going to carry out the work. Um, you know, I'll be integral towards implementing some of this stuff but um, do we have the time and the resources to do it? We think we do, but that'll nevertheless still be a challenge that we'll have to overcome. Is there anything else you would like to add to this podcast? You know, probably just to reiterate that, that this is the, you know, again, in my opinion, this is the absolute right thing that we need to be working on here. Um, we are linking our operations with academics through, you know, our formal curriculum. And that is having enormous payoffs, I think, not just for the university with advancing our sustainability program, but also for the students that are involved. They're finding work afterwards. And one student in particular, uh, Ben Taylor, um, is now working for Patagonia, sir. And Andrew Pettit, who I helped with the inventory last year and is now working for a consulting firm that's been hired by the EPA to do the United States greenhouse gas inventory. So. Students I've found that are working th on these issues at Colgate are almost immediately finding very good work when they get out to work. You know, they're green jobs and they're real. We'd like to thank you for listening to Sustainable Colgate. To find out more or get involved with sustainability on campus, visit the Colgate website. Under the About Colgate section, you will find a link to the sustainability homepage which provides information about the Climate Action Plan and Colgate's green initiatives.